Okay, we're taking a look at an axon right now, if you can tell what this is. If I go back to this diagram, you can see this is what we're looking at, this axon here. So all of this ion movement is actually happening uh, in this thin little tiny axon here, especially at these little breakpoints called the nodes of Ramvier. So sodium goes this way, potassium, blah, 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 blah. We got that. So what happens is if I actually use a, a very tiny voltmeter and I put one end of the voltmeter, the positive end or something, into the inside of the axon and one on the outside, and I try to measure the difference, I actually end up getting a number uh, that says negative 70 millivolts. What that means is, overall, the inside is more negative compared to the outside. Or you could say there's more positive ions on the outside over here. So don't get confused here. This is a famous number, though. Remember, negative 70 millivolts is what we would measure normally when a nerve cell is just being boring, not doing anything. We call it resting potential. So the resting potential of our human uh, nerve cells, actually this is true for other animals as well too, if I measure the distance, the difference in voltage here, it actually comes out to be negative 70 millivolts. This is a standard number. It's called the resting potential when it's not conducting an impulse. So what happens when things start moving in? So when you get a lot of movement, when all of these things rush in here through these sodium channels, and this is diffusion, it's going down a concentration gradient. When they all rush in, well, all of a sudden the inside is going to become more positive. So we should expect this number to increase. And actually that is what happens. So when these all rush in during this initial stage, we call this the action potential. And uh, that actually brings this difference in voltage up to positive 30. We're going to see this on a graph in a second. So pause and then make sure to include this. Include this right now. So it's called the action potential. It's a reversal and restoration of electrical potential across the membrane. And we call it depolarization and repolarization. So what's depolarization? When all these sodium yellow guys came in, that was called depolarization. When these guys rush back out down their concentration gradient, we call that repolarization. And guess what? When these positives move out, we're going to expect this positive value of 30 millivolts to drop back down to the negative range. So that's called depolarization and repolarization. So pause right there and uh, think about that. Get something written down for a second, and then we'll look at a graph. Okay. So key things here, and uh, there's just five steps. We're going to look at, look at a graph at the right here. So uh, number one, the action potential in one part of the neuron causes the action potential to develop in the next. So in the beginning, here is where region one we're looking at down here. This is the resting potential when a nerve cell is doing nothing, negative 70 millivolts. When a kind of a, a wave of propagation comes along, in other words, as the message is being passed along, and this is happening very quickly, um, what happens is, well, sodium channels open very quickly. These sodium channels, they open quickly, and then all the sodium ions rush in, diffuse in. So that's happening here, where, uh, where I've labeled, highlighted as green. Sodium channels open quickly. Uh, sodium channels, then all of a sudden the gates are open, so they just diffuse down their concentration gradient. The entry of these positive ions causes the, uh, the net charge to actually increase. So we go from negative 70 up to plus 30, and we saw that number earlier. That's called depolarization. Immediately after that, potassium channels now open. Potassium channels now open, allowing all these potassium ions to rush out. We call that repolarization, and that's this little kind of pink part. It's coming back down here. Potassium channels open after a short time, and the potassium channels, this is important. This is diffusion because it's going down its concentration gradient back out. Pause right now if it's getting too confusing. Just try to wrap, wrap your brain around this, what's happening here. We call that re polarization. Okay, not too bad. And then in the end, uh, we actually have to bring things back to normal. Do you remember, based on the story, how we bring things back to normal? Well, there's that merry-go-round sodium potassium pump, and they have to come back. So it's two of those guys, it's every three of those guys. That's three sodium ions, the two potassium ions. 
they're going to rotate around, switch places, and that's going to end up back in here. These three are back there. We are reestablishing the resting potential in that way. So finally, the sodium potassium pump. Now this is active transport. The previous two movements were diffusion, down concentration gradients. This is active transport. Sodium potassium pump restores the original concentration gradient by pumping sodium back out and potassium back in. And then you're ready for the next impulse. And that's the relationship there. So when you see a graph like this, don't be scared. Uh, negative 70 to plus 30 comes back down. This is what it is normally. So when a nervous impulse gets sent, basically what's happening, if there's a pin at this end here and your spinal cord is at this end here, when you get poked with the pin, you get various chemical signals changing, which basically result in sodium ions opening, and they rush in, and this just happens down over and over again until it reaches uh, the central nervous system. And then you get the same thing kind of happening going backwards. Okay. Hope that was okay. Post questions. I know you must have lots. Thanks.